Hello, and welcome to Gallery Works. My name is Kitty Lynn Klisch, and we're in the studio today with three artists whose work is now hanging in the new gallery at the Plymouth Art Center, Gallery 110 North. The Art Center has completed the gallery portion of the remodeling, and for all of the local visitors, I want you to be sure and stop by and see these gals work. We have, the name of the show is The Nature of Three, and we have Diane Bywaters, Kristen Jardset, and Laura Ibbotson, and each artist is um, works in a different medium, but they have a, a very connected relationship, and I'm really thrilled to have them on the show today. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having us. Thank, thank you, you so much. much for coming. I know you guys had to drive quite a little ways <laughs> to get here. Thank you very much. And um, Diane, um, how, how did this all come about, this relationship? between the, the three of you, and is this the first show that you've done, the three of you together? Uh, it's the first show just with us in it. Okay. Uh, we've been in group shows before. Mm -hmm. And really, it's Kristen that um, got us all together uh, to do this uh, show. So I taught Kristen years ago, and then she's taught Laura, and then Laura is now an artist in her own right. So yeah. it was like three generations of artists. That, so that have affected each other and love nature. Right, right. And, and, and each, even though, you know, the thing that I find surprising is that you all work in different mediums. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I just, you know, I think that's, you don't like copy one another. You've mm -hmm. learned, mm -hmm. but you've gone off and done your own thing. And I think that's, I think that's really fantastic. Um, and you are a professor yeah, of I, art, uh -huh. right? Right. I teach at the University of Wisconsin, mm -hmm. Stevens Point, and I have for over 20 years. And uh, Kristen was an outstanding student of mine. And I think uh, really a successful teacher doesn't make you a copyist. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, we don't need, you know, more people painting like me. Clones, right. Yeah. And so I think, uh, you know, she has come up with her mm -hmm. individual you know, concept and statement in her work too. Right. So I think all three of us, you can see, you know, that we have a similar subject and a mm -hmm. love of painting, uh, but we're coming at it in different views. Yeah. Right, right, and that's what makes that's what makes this particular show um, at the new gallery so such a marvelous show for the gallery to open with, mm -hmm. because I I'm telling you I, the opening night I walked in there and it just knocked my socks off. I mean the work is spectacular, all, all nice. three of you, Thank you know, you. I mean, it's Thank just you. spectacular. Mm -hmm. And Kristen, okay. now you are also work at, at, at an academy, right? Uh, yes, I teach at Wisconsin Lutheran College, and I'm the art department head, and I've been teaching there since 1995. And Laura was one of my students. As and she said. was one of your students. Yes, and she shared a love for nature uh, as myself, and uh, she traveled with me on a faculty mini-grant to the Redwoods in California to paint and draw for a week, so we had a fantastic that fantastic experience. Yeah, I guess so, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really, when you, um, I remember many, many years ago when I was learning and my teacher took me under her wing and let me come to her private studio and study privately with her for a week. And that was kind of the same thing as you going to the Redwoods mm -hmm. with, with uh, Kristen. And it, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing like it. You just mm -hmm. feel so special. You really do, I know, I know. Mm -hmm. so. And I love your work. I, I really, Kristen, I, just, I, I, you know, see, I don't do watercolor, so I'm, I'm in awe of anybody that can do watercolor. <laughs> it's so great. So um, I would like to talk a little bit about your work. Um, now, and Diane, once again, I'll start with you. Um, the painting that we opened the show with, uh, what's the title of that, and where is that? It's at Yellowstone uh, National Park, and it was a creek, uh, so it's just rushing water. 
mm -hmm. uh, is the title of it. And I'm working in plein air mostly all the time. I do do some studio works, but mainly I am working on location. And in Plymouth, uh, there, there's some very large scale pieces, eight feet. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm still working on location uh, with those pieces. And that's a real true love of mine is sitting on location and painting. And how long, how do you do that? Do you, I mean, because of the, of the light change and everything, right. do you have to go there every day at the same time? You bet. And, mm -hmm. and, and work on it? And, right. and for those, like, mm -hmm. those eight, long, eight foot long mm -hmm. pieces, you know, there's, there's some that are, what, two, two, three, two, two and a half by, right. by eight, mm -hmm. and, you, and you, in order to do that, how many days do you, are you there working? Uh, a lot of times I'll, I'll try to do a key one of those on one of my residencies in the national parks or a private foundation residency. So uh, usually those are limited to two weeks, but I don't have any distractions except being in the park to paint if I get mm -hmm. selected for those. And so it's a real intense uh, process and a real productive process. So I will go at the same time every day and paint in plain air, it's called. It's a French ter term, you, meaning in open air. Right. And do you, do you just work on one piece at a time? No. Um, I'll be doing one large key piece, and then I'll do smaller scale pieces, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I might pick the afternoon to be working on a large scale piece, and then I'll spend the morning and late, late um, afternoon uh, to finish smaller pieces. Yeah, so. right. And, and I, if I remember correctly in your resume, mm -hmm. uh, you have been a painter in residence uh, um, at national parks yes. more than any other artist in the United States. I believe so. I have had tremendous luck getting into the national parks from Alaska to Hawaii, uh, twice to Rocky Mountain National Parks, uh, lo you know, more regional, it's uh, oh, Apostle Islands and Voyagers. And yeah, I've had a tremendous, uh, just a tremendous time and I'm really honored to be a part of that. Uh, experience and what you do as an artist in residence, you have isolated time, but then they require you to maybe do a presentation mm -hmm. or and to donate one of your pieces. And it's right. always a privilege to have one of my pieces oh my. in the National Park collection. Of course, of course, yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. And now, okay, now this is three smaller paintings, mm -hmm. and um, I like this concept mm -hmm. this putting uh, three pieces together. Are we looking at the same um, place from three different angles? Yeah, uh, this is actually Ghost Ranch. Uh, most people know Ghost Ranch because of Georgia O'Keeffe. Right. And I went there uh, to paint, and this was my view from my cabin, my little rustic cabin. It did have running water uh, that I'd go out to the mesa and paint every day, that view. I did a large piece and many, many smaller pieces. And since it was the same view, I thought it would be nice to experience them um, together. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's beautiful, and your presentation is gorgeous. Oh, thank you. I love that. Thank you. Okay. And then the little piece we have sitting up there, uh -huh. where is that? Well, actually, that's uh, Milwaukee. I had the privilege of being UW Systems Fellow for an opportunity uh, to the 21st Century uh, program, and that year it was called Past Knowing, and only one artist was selected that year, and it a lot of times is a group of humanities faculty that to get together and brainstorm ideas, share each other's research, and attend lectures. And I actually painted out of my view, uh, my, my office view, and I did a series of paintings. That's marvelous. Thanks. And the one up above, another panorama. And that's, uh, I'm from Stevens Point, Wisconsin, obviously, if I teach there, and that's Jordan Park, one of my favorite places to go with my students. It's, you know, just a couple mi uh, minutes outside of uh, the town of Stevens Point, and I always take my beginning painting students out there to paint. Oh, that so. looks, oh that's really nice. That Thanks. really is. I really love your work. You're, you're very, very accomplished. Oh, thank and, you. And I just, I'm really impressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Kitty. <laughs> I mean, I was impressed when I walked in there. I mean, eight foot long paintings on, and she does them out there on site. I mean, my gosh, <laughs> you know, that's quite a feat. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> and you, Kristen, let's talk about you. What did now? What do you paint on site also? I do. I paint a drawn location, and Diane was really instrumental in getting uh, in an, in 
encouraging me to apply for artists in residence programs at national parks as well. So I've been privileged with three so far, not as many as Diane, but I've been at Glacier National Park, Mesa Verde, and Everglades. Oh and, my. and they definitely represent the best experiences of my life, and I hope to do more. Uh, I know we've applied together actually to uh, for Antarctica as well, so that's one of our dreams as well as artists. But um, I noticed that there were paintings from Iceland. Yes. In the show, mm -hmm. how did that come to be? As a as a professor at WLC, I'm kind of been put in charge of organizing trips, and so every two to three years, I organize a, a trip somewhere to paint and draw to make art. And so I decided uh, Iceland would be a great place, and both Laura and Diane came along with me, as well as a number of other students and guests, and we experienced uh, just an amazing, majestic, verdant, green, beautiful landscape for eight days. Oh my gosh. So. Now you work in, in uh, uh, several mediums, right? Yes, my favorites are pastels and acrylics. I also work in watercolor, though not the same approach as Laura, yes. Um, and, uh, but I'd say drawing, uh, drawing trees are one of my favorite subjects. Uh, I just think they have a lot of personality. I enjoy their, their, their qualities like people, their animated branches, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, showing relationships and using them as a metaphor uh, for our experiences as, as people. So, right, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. That's really wonderful. And let's see some, let's see some, well, we have the painting behind you there. Mm -hmm. That's from Rocky Mountain National Park. Mm -hmm. And I have not been the Arson residence there yet, but I have visited there several times. It's yeah. one of my favorite places. And Laura and I had gone there on a trip together. This is one of the, uh, hike, on one of the hiking routes by Lily Lake. And there's these uh, really kind of uh, sort of uh, strange root systems as the trees sort of try to hold on to the sides of the mountains. And right, just, right. Uh, and so they're so mm -hmm. the roots are actually above ground. Yes. Yeah, yes. It's, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's like that in Alaska too. Uh -huh. You know, and they they uh, because the ground is so shallow. Yes. You know, and, and uh -huh. then there's rock underneath. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you very much. Such great, such great range of value and texture. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Oh, thank you. What else do you have to show us? Well, I have a smaller piece here. This is actually inspired from up north, uh, northern Wisconsin. I grew up uh, spending my summers north of Stevens Point a couple hours in Hazelhurst, Wisconsin. And so this is, uh, these are a couple of the trees on my grandparents' uh, property. That's really where I began my love of forests. I would spend the summers uh, hiking with my grandpa. And it's beautiful, life. just beautiful. Now, is this pastel? This is pastel. This is Conte pastel, yes. Beautiful. You know, may I, may I just ask? Yes. Does, does the, the large tree represent your grandfather and the smaller one you? I guess I didn't think about that. Uh, when I created that, but that's certainly fitting. It's definitely fitting, Kitty. And then this was a study created after the fact. Laura and I had gone to Redwood National Park, mm -hmm. and one of the experiences I'd hoped to have was to see the redwoods in the mist, in the fog, and we uh, had that opportunity for a couple hours one morning. It was just a really a spiritual, peaceful environment, and so I made a couple of pieces from that, and oh, this is one yeah. of those drawings. That's beautiful. So, it doesn't quite capture the size. These are trees that are two to three hundred feet high, right, <laughs> right. around fifty feet in diameter. Yeah, so just, right. I think that's that's been one of the blessings of going to national parks is just seeing the diversity of landscape of the the, the animals. The plant life is, is just so incredible and so inspiring that you never run out of things to no, paint. No, you don't. No, you don't. It's, oh, that is beautiful. And you have, you have shown, you've captured that feel of the mist mm -hmm. and the feel of the forest, the, you know, the, the forest floor. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. Just beautiful. Just enough color mm -hmm. to give it lots of interest. I like it a lot. Thank you. And then I have a couple of drawings uh, that uh, are more in, in progress here. There's um, mm -hmm. 
Uh, one here, this is actually Lapham Peak State Park. And these are more recent works. So I was actually sitting outside uh -huh. uh, drawing in, in the woods. And one of the things that I've started to add and would like to incorporate more into my work, I have, as you look closely, there's butterflies and birds that came. Life. Life, life that mm -hmm. came up to me, uh, you know, set uh, by me. So I've, I've been trying to incorporate a little bit more of that into my environments. And this is pastel as well. And these are on the, the, the papers are very warm gray, isn't it? Yes, I prefer to work on colored papers for mm -hmm. the pastels. I think it brings out the contrast and sure. the highlights quite nicely. Yeah, so. yeah, and 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 it gives a a very subtle warmth mm -hmm. that's coming through mm -hmm. that makes it so much more than just black and white. Mm -hmm. You know, beautiful. And mm -hmm. I know there's another one. Another one underneath. There. So I'll I'll take this and okay, okay we got it. Got All it. Right. Ooh, look at this. Now this yeah. is actually Greenfield Park in West don't, Dallas. Don't pull it uh, around the corner, hun, because okay. it makes it buckle. Just kind of okay. like hold it straight. Okay. okay. Thank you. Oh, boy. So this is a very... My draftsmanship, yes. my gosh. <laughs> this is two days of work. So I, two days? Two days of work, yeah. Oh. Yes. On site. On site. Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't it hard to work in pastel on site? It is. Insects and, uh, yes, you get quite messy. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, like, you know, one little drop of perspiration. And mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Fortunately, I don't sweat too much. <laughs> I stay pretty calm. <laughs> But, uh, but the wind you have to worry about, and always, you always have to have enough clips because otherwise the paper, you know, blows up and yeah. making sure that it doesn't, it doesn't become smudged. And like I say, insects, you know, that's the thing that, you know, they might try to bite you and, yeah, you know, yeah. that, so. Well, when you're painting in oil, as Diane knows, <laughs> and, and I'm an oil painter, you know, you just leave them on because after mm -hmm. the paint dries, you flick them yeah. off, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And sometimes you can get the nicest effects with uh -huh. these little legs walking around the right. paint. <laughs> That's beautiful. Honey. Oh, thank that you really very much. Is. Oh, thank you so much for, for bringing those along today. Yeah, and you. now, Miss Laura, <laughs> what do you have to show us? And first of all, tell me, how does it feel to be sitting here with your mentor, and your mentor's mentor. <laughs> Very exciting. It's an exciting opportunity. I, I guess when I first studied under Kristen, I was starting just to dabble in art, and I appreciated it. And I guess I never realized how far it would actually go. And um, speaking about the opportunity to paint with her at the Redwoods, I would say that was probably one of the most um, influential opportunities um, to then go into painting um, from nature. And that was probably the thing that influenced me most um, to then go on and paint the things I am now. I, when I met you the other night, you were carrying your baby mm -hmm. with you there at the opening. And isn't it rather difficult to juggle your artwork with being a new mommy? Yeah, it's pretty difficult. She, whenever I think I have things figured out, and I can paint at a certain time of day. She always throws a loop in there, and yeah. I always have to paint whenever she's sleeping and or at night, late at night. So she keeps me pretty busy, but I still try and make time for it and mm -hmm. paint when I can. Mostly now it's from photos um, instead of plein air. I prefer to do that, but eventually when she's older, I'll go back to oh, sure. painting in plein air. Sure, yeah. Everything is in stages when you're young, yes. you know. And then this too shall pass. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll be sorry that she grew up so fast. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. It's already going too fast. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure she's beautiful. Okay, and so let's see some of your work. Well, first of mm -hmm. all, though, what I'm really curious about with an oil painter mm -hmm. and a pastel charcoal um, mentors, what prompted you to decide? that you wanted to try watercolor. What about watercolor really, you know, um, made you interested in using it as a mm -hmm. medium? Well, I had started out doing, studying oil with Kristen and studying drawing. Um, and I liked all those things, but none of them really felt like they were coming naturally to me. I, I enjoyed them, but they weren't 
um, I guess my chosen or they weren't the exact thing I felt like I should be compatible com with compatible yet and then I she was starting a watercolor class and I thought well I'll give this a try too not thinking that this would be the medium that I would enjoy most and the first day in the class that was it's like it suddenly clicked and all oh, of the yeah. all the things I had learned so far all got combined together and it just flowed it was whenever that big I would aha paint. moment yeah, yeah. And, and and when that happens doesn't your heart just fill yeah Don't you just feel like oh I'm like soaring I know mm -hmm. because it's like it's, it's, it's a wonderful moment. It's, yes. it's, it's a, a real revelation, I know. Well, I'd like to see some of your work, too, okay. and I know the viewers would, too. My first painting is actually one of my first this watercolors. This is one of your first paintings? This is one of my first watercolors. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> yeah. Um, the photo, I had worked from a photo for that one, and it was um, from a trip um, in Arkansas um, in the springtime. Oh gosh, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. So delicate. <clears throat> That's just beautiful, and I love I love your color choices. Just enough of the cool mm -hmm. to really pop the warm. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very thank nice. You. And your next piece. My next is piece. This is <clears throat> a painting that was done in plein air. In oh, that Colorado. is beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, the producer of our show here, um, he works, he's a watercolorist also. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know he's liking this right now. Um, this is beautiful. This mm -hmm. is really beautiful. And this one and the next three were all done at the Forbes Ranch. The in Forbes Col Ranch, now where's that on? It's in Colorado. Um, in, well, it's the southern part of Colorado. Really, really pretty. Very nice. And Laura's being <coughs> humble. She was yes. selected to be the artist in residence at the Forbes Ranch. Well, so, gosh. So, mm -hmm. so I was one of, I, that's the only artist in residence. Well, one, I guess two. I did at the artist in residence at Whitefish Dunes here in Wisconsin. Um, but the Forbes Ranch was, it was a group of 20 artists that were selected through the um, artist, American Artist Magazine. And we spent a week there drawing and painting. Um, and then we had a show in New York afterwards, about a year later. Oh, you're kidding. Gosh. No. <laughs> Laura, it was what quite an the opportunity. How long have you been painting? Um, I would say at least, well, I studied under Kristen and graduated in 2003, and then I've been painting since then. So it'll be um, close to 10 years soon. So. Okay. Oh, okay. You look so young. It look, you, you, you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm giving away. <laughs> For a little while now. Oh, oh that's marvelous. Mm -hmm. That's a marvelous accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It really is. Let's see the next piece. Mm -hmm. And these were <clears throat> then done back in my studio afterwards um, <clears throat> from photos that I took there. Oh. And this one is of aspen trees, and the title is called Aspens. Um, I love that. All oh, that's so soft, so subtle. And one of the things I loved about the ranch is they had the very low valley, valleys where you could look up at the mountains and then they had these really, um, you could go up in the mountains and paint the trees or paint the, the rivers and it, they had quite a bit of difference in their landscape there. Beautiful, beautiful. And the draftsmanship <laughs> there again. Yeah, you really learn from your teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really, really nice. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank it's you. It's just, it just <clears throat> you know, I, I just get a feeling of peacefulness from this. Mm -hmm. It's very, very peace, peace filled. It's beautiful. <clears throat> and the last one is from the same place, more of the valley where it was drier. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of um, mm -hmm. sagebrush beautiful. there. And that was a lot of the other things that I painted, the very soft sagebrush with mm -hmm. the shadows. This one has more of a contrasting shadow, but most of their ones were softer. But it, the know, shape, the abstract shape, is what attracted me to that one. That's just what I was going to say. The composition on this is is in this is very uh, is very good, very strong. And um, the uh, the thing that I really like about your work is that your darks, even though there are you know many many layers, mm -hmm. they are still translucent and they're not you know. Um, opaque. I mean, it's, it's just it's soft, soft, soft mm -hmm. all the way, you know. 
And I, f I find that people's personalities come out in their paintings. Don't you think? I think so. It, yeah. yeah. It's beautiful, just beautiful. Thank you. And I have, to, I have to tell the viewers that if you really want to see a show that is absolutely extraordinary, because this has just been a very small sampling of these three artists' work, you, you've got to go to Gallery 110 North at the Plymouth Art Center, the new gallery, and see the show. How long is the show going to be up? Till the end of February. Until the end of February. All right, you've got two months. You better go see it. If you're local, go and see it because it's fantastic. And we just have a couple minutes left. Um, who was your mentor? Oh, I enjoyed Robert Sudlow as far as landscape. He's from mm -hmm. the University of Kansas in Lawrence. I was born and raised in Kansas City. Okay. So he was a great influence on my work. Okay. And has anyone other than Diane influenced influenced you? I mean, uh, with your drawings. One of my professors at UW Milwaukee for graduate school was William Nichols, mm -hmm. and he was he was always very supportive. He was he's a landscape artist as well, mm -hmm. and just a, just a really great teacher. Good, very positive. Good. Mm -hmm. good. And and for and for you. Um, was there is there any other watercolor artists that that you really look up to that are just mainly you know work in the field of watercolor? Um, <clears throat> not really any watercolors, but um, when I was growing up, my grandfather was a painter too, okay. and that influenced me. Um, I always looked to his work when he had passed away before I was born, and I always looked to his work and um, admired it, and always wanted to be an artist as well. So I, that was a big influence in my life. Oh, that's beautiful. That really is. That's, yeah, that's nice. And so the the three of you are going to be at the Plymouth Art Center. Uh, your work is until the end of February. Mm -hmm. And I just I want to thank you so much uh, for being here today on Gallery Works. This is Diane Bywaters, and this is let me check my <laughs> my pronunciation here. And this is Kristen Gerstedt. Yes. What, what, what nationality? It's Norwegian. Norwegian, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> and Laura Ibbotson. And thank you, Bo, all three of you, so much for being here today. Oh, thank you. It was it's lovely. It's really been thank a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Really been thank a pleasure. You. And once again, this is Kitty Lynn Klisch for Gallery Works. And don't miss our next show because it'll be another good one. Bye bye for now. Thank you.